the preacher has given me the task to talk about God's grace. Yeah. And, uh, and I appreciate the challenge of being able to do that. And, uh, and so tonight, I, I've invited you to uh, the 15th chapter of uh, the Gospel of Luke. And the reason I have is because we have been studying night after night from what is called didactic literature, uh, instructional literature. We have taken uh, what Paul has written in the epistles, and these were uh, instructional words for the New Testament church. Uh, and, and I hope that we've done that in a fashion that has been sufficient for you to learn those things that were important to Paul as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, tonight we want to add to that imagery, but we want to look at uh, the teaching of Jesus himself. All right. Uh, so that as we continue along the road of discovering the beauty of the grace of God, tonight we'll see it from the imagery of what is called the travel uh, or the Jerusalem document. This is that body of teaching right. that Jesus did uh, as he set his face toward Jerusalem, knowing that he was on his way uh, to that city for no other reason yes, than to die as the Passover lamb, right. as the sacrificial lamb, as that lamb without blemish, whose blood would hide us from the wrath of God right. and from the penalty of our sins. And so what Jesus does from Luke chapter 9, verse 51, all the way to the week of his passion, uh, the week that encompassed him observing the Passover, and then becoming the Passover lamb, where he died for our sins. That body of teaching, uh, that body of instruction, is where you come face to face with the theology of Jesus. Yes, sir. And so tonight, I want you just to see Jesus. Is that all right? Come on. All right. And, and, and I, want you right. To, I want you to see in yes, his sir. own teaching the graciousness and the gracious invitation that the Lord gives for you and I to be saved. Right. That's, right. that's, that's what I intend to do, all right? Uh, we are going to look then tonight, as much as time permits, at, at a parable. And, and, and parables uh, were one of, if not the major method, that the Lord used to teach people. All right. Uh, you might be a great teacher, but I don't think you can improve upon the method that the Lord used. Yes, sir. All right. And so tonight, let's come face to face with the heart of Jesus as he talks to us from yes, this sir. great story. Y'all like stories? Yes. All right. Yes, it didn't matter quiet in here, y'all. All right. Do you really? All right. Uh, even some of you who don't claim to like stories, you like stories. You yeah. You didn't even nod your head, but I bet if, if I started asking you about uh, what happened on the young and the restless, some of you would, would know about that story. Um, people remember stories. In fact, we become enamored with characters from stories. In fact, sometimes people who are too shy to talk about uh, the story of Jesus can talk about those fictional characters in those stories on television just like you know them. All right. In fact, I've, I've overheard conversations where I thought people were talking about real folk right. and, and got involved in their conversation trying to find out who would do something as despicable as that only to find out they were talking about all of my children. Right. <laughs> and, so, and so people remember stories. All right. And the Lord uses these stories yeah. to press upon us to burn in our minds certain principles. Now, brethren, a principle is something that is true. A principle is always true. All right. A principle transcends time, yes, transcends culture, yeah. transcends history, transcends geography. It's 
just true. It's axiomatic. You can't change it. It is, it is, it is non-negotiable. Right. It was true when it was said. It's true now, and it'll be true later on. All right. Old folk used to say, uh, 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 when, when, when they would give you something that was true, uh, they would tell you, just keep on living. If you don't believe it now, you'll believe it after a while, because it was true when I told you, and it'll be true then. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go back in time. We're going to look at a story that is that is heavily steeped in the culture of its time. We're going to discover principles that are timeless. We're going to bring those principles right here in where my flat name, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. <laughs> and, and, and we're going to apply those principles right. to where you and I live. All right. Is that all right? then tonight, the text uh, from Matthew, did I give you time? Find <laughs> Matthew, or rather uh, Luke chapter 15. All right. All right. You, and y'all can smile every once in a while. All right. <laughs> All right. Luke chapter 15. If you, if you have your Bible, let's, let's read the passage. It covers the first uh, seven verses of Luke chapter 15. I'm reading from the King James Translation. The Holy Bible says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost? until he find it. All right. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. 